Hey guys, Russ here with bishopswest.com. Want to talk today a little bit about using Bitwig and creating a gated reverb effect within Bitwig. I'm going to do just kind of a basic example first with a snare drum and then do something a little bit more extreme. If you've seen the video that I did for Cakewalk using gated reverb, this is very similar, but of course in Bitwig we go about it in a completely different way. So let's get started. Okay, so to start out with what is a gated reverb, uh, it's an effect that became popular in the 80s, especially used on snare drums. Um, I believe Phil Collins was the one who popularized it. And what it does is when the snare drum hits, it adds a reverb, but then it lets you control how long you want to hear that reverb. And so the reverb will go strong for however long you want to hear it, but then it'll die very, very suddenly. So just to let you hear what I'm talking about, here I've got my snares in here, and this is what it sounds like just without any effects. Okay, uh, just a really basic snare. And so what I've done is, down here, I've added an F FX layer. Okay, within that layer, what I've done is I want the audio basically to take two paths. So the first path is just going through this layer one. You can control R, rename that, whatever you want. And that's just my raw layer. It doesn't have any effects on it. That's allowing the, the original snare sound to keep coming through. So if I've got this muted, right, and you can see in the meter there that it's still going through just fine. And then what I've done is I've added a separate path here to have my reverb. Um, to do that, of course, you just press the plus. That brings up all the stuff that you can add. And you see when I did that, it created a, a separate layer for whatever I want to add already. So I, that's what I did for both of those. With the layer one, once I had done that, I just deleted the, the effect that I chose, whatever it was. Okay, but with the falling hall, what that is, is that's my reverb. So. Let's go ahead and rename it. And I've chosen, <laughs> you can still hear it, just a basic, um, I think it's a large hall or what's it called? Yeah, falling hall as the preset. And so now if you listen to it, right, that adds a lot of space to it huge reverb the problem is it keeps going on forever um, and it's gonna you know in a real mix it's gonna conflict with the other instruments maybe if it's a drum solo and that's the effect I want fine but normally you don't want something to hang, hang on for that long and kind of muddy up the mix so then what I've done from there is I clicked on this wet FX box here um, and then right here so you have this plus I clicked on that plus and I brought in the gate. Okay, so now if I press play, right, so you can hear and even see on the graph down there that it's it has that reverb going strong, but it cuts it off just after a short little bit. Um, and then the thing with the gate that you can do is you can adjust the release here. To make it as tight or loose as you want um, really and of course it just depends on what you're trying to achieve within the mix but that kind of gives more body to your snare lets it ring out a little bit more kind of push through the mix a little bit more so again if we listen to it without that's what it sounds like but then with
Okay. So yeah, it's something to fun to play with um, on your snares there. Now, like I said, I wanted to do something different with the with the synth. So here I brought in my Zeta tube and oops, one. And again, all I did was I created a simple sine wave here. Um, just added some distortion, basic soft drive distortion on it. So what it sounds like without any effects. Okay, really, really basic. Nothing special. And so probably if you're using this and maybe, you know, tweak it some within the synth, but then you want to give it some more reverb, some more presence within the mix. What you can do then is kind of the same thing. So what I've done is got my FX layer here. Same thing, I've got the first layer that doesn't have any effects, it's just a pure signal coming through, right? Um, but then this one, well, the first thing I did was I added a pitch shifter because I wanted to be able to kind of hear what it would sound like, make it clear to hear what I'm doing here. So not beautiful necessarily, and I don't think you would do that in real life, but it'll make it obvious what's going on here. The next thing I did from there was I added this reverb, same preset as before, I think. The falling hall. So you can really hear that it's kind of ringing out, right? And then from there, um, instead of using the gate, I actually chose dynamics. And I'll tell you why in a second here, but... Um, when I do that, here's what it sounds like. <laughs> right? So as long as the key is held down, all you can hear is that original signal from the synth. But as soon as I let go of the key, that reverb comes through. Right? Pretty interesting. And you can have it out here on its own in the chain or within the wet effects. Um, but what I've done, so you can see I've taken the ratio all the way up one to infinity. This would be more of a normal, what you would expect to see in a compressor. I took it all the way down. The knee just gave it a hard knee. Not that it matters at infinity, but then the threshold, you know, you can do that, but I wanted to cut out everything. I don't want anything left. Okay. And then here's a trick is down here in the little side chain section. This is why I had to set up the layers like this because I want it to be listening for the signal from this sans effects layer. Okay. So if you look here, you can choose within the Zeta 2 plus Zeta plus two, you've got the regular out and you probably could have used that, but then you've also got the FX layers. If you choose pre, this will still, um, uh, let the signal come. Even if you turn down the volume, so um, let me just show you here. Even if I mute this or turn it down, right? I'm pressing the key, here comes the signal, but it's muted, but over here, it's still listening to that. You can just hear just a tiny bit being let through, but as soon as I let go, okay, and I'll have to take that all the way down to zero. It's even less, but then here comes the reverb. Okay, so what it sounds like then in real life. Right, so really interesting. It lets the original synth come through really clearly, but then at the end it, it adds the reverbs for, uh, for the presence. And that way things don't get muddied up too much when you want it to really come through the mix. Okay. Um, so I think that's all I had to show you. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Have fun playing with this, and I'll see you next time.